happy Friday and welcome to Houston Life, everyone. It's the last day of July, July, July. 31st. Can you believe it? Oh, my word. This year, I have to tell you, so crazy. So I crazy. love, so not only, yay, TGIF, this is so good, but I love walking into the studio and the aroma of food on the deck, because we haven't eaten lunch yet. Yeah. And we planned that, well, I guess I did. I had a bag of popcorn. What did you eat? You had a Snickers? I had a Snickers bar <laughs> and a Rice Krispie treat. Just a mini Snickers. We're in survival mode, okay? Here we are. In Channel 2. It's Feely, who restocks, you know, our food for right. us. That's not her job, but she tries to keep the staff fed, and we love her so much. So There's always an array of something to pick through, and now she was putting up her display today. I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to ruin it. I got to get that popcorn. It's my lunch. But today uh, we have real food. We do have real food. And how amazing is this? Okay, so the food on our set is all to celebrate Filipino food. And this is actually a dessert. It's oh. called buku pandan, which is a co coconut dessert. And then we've got um, egg rolls here. That's lumpia. And you have the rest, I think. Yeah, on your and side. this is a uh, this is a soup. I think it's called sinigang. Mm -hmm. It's like a um, seafood. I th I think so. Yeah, I hope I'm saying that correctly. And then the uh, yeah the. Uh, Buku, buko pandan is the coconut dessert. So looking forward, I'm gonna just take a bite of the dessert first. I just, you want an egg roll? These are so yummy. I could eat probably this entire mm. plate. Oh my gosh, I will take one. You know, it's interesting. We, um, we usually wolf down the food during commercial breaks. It is sort of tough to eat. It is, Miss Ruth. <laughs> I know you're very concerned, but we do eat. I do eat the food. And mm. this is delicious, as you just saw me eat. Oh my gosh, wow. Did well, you like, the egg rolls are, are delicious. Mm-hmm, and I see some okra in that bowl. Mm. We're gonna get to this know um, very interesting. Filipino culture a little better later today. Remember Cheryl Pixio? Oh yeah. One of our friends of Houston Life, you guys have seen her on the show multiple times. Uh, she actually filled in for you, I think, one day when you were when you were away. She sat here at the desk. She did, I she's know. She's a lot of fun. So, so she's fun. gonna link up with us and we're gonna chat with her by Zoom and learn a little more about Filipino culture during today's show. So speaking of food, typically yeah. on Fridays, what we do is it's takeout Friday. That's usually, we don't, we don't cook at home because we've done it all week and we wanna support our local restaurants during this time and we pick a place. It's usually Mexican food, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Yeah. We don't stray from that very often on a Friday. Oh, yeah. So. What's the plan for today? Are you do you have dinner plans or what are you, what are you gonna do? For I don't us? know what yeah, I don't know what we're gonna get yet for takeout. I'm sure it's gonna be usually it's Alma Latina. That's usually where we in the heights. So uh, um, such a great place. Love, love, love them. But do you have a plan for takeout? Usually we talk about dinner in the evening and Brandon is the one who's responsible for the meal at okay. home. Okay. Not responsible like that's his job, but he just <laughs> he loves to cook and he's, he's a great cook. Yeah, I mean, typically, if pre-COVID, if we were having people over the house, and I would say, oh, Brandon, like, do you want me to cook tomorrow? No, no. The, the answer was always well, no. Orlando's the cook in ours, so. The problem, though, is our work schedules are so messed up, and typically, I'm not eating. It depends on how the morning goes. And so if we're just back-to-back -back meetings all morning, right. then oftentimes I won't eat until lunchtime, or sometimes I don't even eat lunch. You know me, I right? know you. You brought me food last week because yes. I didn't eat lunch. So yesterday, when I got home, I was really hungry, but Brandon had just eaten. So I had two bowls of Cheerios. For dinner? And a bottle of champagne. Oh, <gasps> that sounds lovely. <laughs> it was so good. I, I don't know. remember the last time I had Cheerios. But then I went outside and I was working in the yard because, you know, it's like Grey Gardens. The jasmine has just, you can't even see the house anymore. But it so smells out so there, good. But it stopped blooming by this time of year. It's too warm. Okay, there's something that's blooming. It's it, in my neighbor's yard, but it hangs over our fence and it smells like jasmine. Maybe oh, it's it lilac. Be. Maybe. I don't know. I can't. But it's the white. Yeah, usually jasmine blooms starting Spring. in the springtime, yeah. right? By now it's a little bit too hot, so all of our blooms have fallen off. I think ours, is, it must be this lilac tree that we've now mm. enjoying the scent of. Anyway. The smell of summer. Yes. So I was outside, and I ended up working outside until 10 p.m. Really, really late, I right? I had a headlamp on. Well, the house has lights on it, so we just... You said you were outside. Oh, you mean it, the the lights from your house were, okay. You got like outside lights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was, and I had the bug spray because mosquitoes were around. And by the time I, I came in, Brandon had, since our food schedule was off, he had cooked Brussels sprouts. 
The house smelled Stunk. so bad. But don't, you love Brussels sprouts. You know, but the, the fragrance, though, you know sometimes you get some bad broccoli and you open it up and it smells like... Yeah. Just like an outhouse? Yes. That's sort good. of how the sprouts smelled. So by the time I came in... To eat it. Um, it No, no, because my Cheerios and champagne like that held me over. <laughs> so I didn't need it. He had the Brussels sprouts. But I was thinking of you while I was outside because the amount of lizards I encountered what while out there... What is happening? Four lizards. I had spiders crawling on my neck. You know, the, the problem with jasmine, too, is that it's, lizards live in the jasmine, which right. is so cute. We have these bright green lizards, and then they turn brown, and spiders crawling all over me. And I was remembering, when my sister was living in Brazil, you know she lived down there, right? right? Uh-huh. She lived there serving a mission for her church for a year and a, year and a half. She used to have uh, lizards come up through the shower drain. So like you would be in the shower mm -mm. and suddenly you would be staring. And granted, the lizards and geckos in Brazil are probably different than they are here. But I thought of you and thought, what would Courtney do oh, my in word. this scenario? So last night I didn't, I, I was, they're so fast. I don't know how people I catch them. I feel like there's so many more this year. I don't know why. I feel like they're all over the place. And maybe because now we have a dog and I'm kind of more in tune to or them. Or you're spending more time at home during COVID. Yeah, so but I, I mean, I walk and run and I'm outside. We, you know, we're outside with the boys and things like that. But I feel like they're there are way more lizards this year than, than any other year. So I don't know why. So what happened then with your lizard scenario? Because I know our show has been preempted a couple days this week. Yesterday, the funeral services for <sighs> Congressman John Lewis. Yeah. Beautiful services. Uh, sorry we missed you, but it was great to watch those services. But the update for people who <laughs> missed earlier in the week, Courtney had a, a lizard loose in her house. Mm -hmm. Yes, for about 32 hours. And the last visual that we had on said lizard was in my room our you know our bedroom and so i at that point i moved all the furniture i was you know had flashlights i was trying to just find it to have one of the boys capture it and release it you know like just so i can get a visual get him out just you know get him out well, no, mm -mm. couldn't find him, couldn't find him. Did you so have trouble sleeping home. that night? Yes, it was so weird. Like, I literally was like, we're moving. We got to get out of here. Because you <laughs> were imagining just being in bed and having the lizard crawl all on over you. On my face and, you know, so I, here I am walking into the bathroom and there it was in the sink. And this thing. Well, that's perfect. It was per perfect. <laughs> but look how big it is. I mean, that's, that is not that big. It's big. Wait, I can I cannot I see it. It's I don't getting know why cut we off. Can't see it. Please. Oh, How well, are you gonna get it? It's th huge. I think it was just maybe the video, How the way it was it? cropped. Yeah. So what? Oh. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, this is hard to see on the screen because the video was edited in a weird way, I guess. But the the cup didn't actually damage. No, 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 no. We the the Liz. Then Connor said, "I need some paper. I need a, something." And so he scooped the paper and the cup, and you know, was released outside. Yeah. I Don't, hope he, he gently released that. No, he kind of tossed it in the grass, and it, you know, said thank you okay. and scurried on. <laughs> And so he's okay then? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's not back in our house, so it's all good. That's great, and you're sleeping well. Yes. So, I mean, here's the thing. I, here's the answer to the question, if I was in the shower and that came up the drain. If you lived in Brazil. You know, you I mean, I would slip, fall, crack my head, done. It would be over. Trying to get out of the shower. That's what would happen to me. Did you I know this? Did I tell you that once uh, there was a roach in in the Stop. shower in L.A. It wasn't at my place. It was this other place. They, let, they go down the drains for water. I mean, they, that's a, that's a water source. Roaches are attracted to that. That's why they live in those sago palms, too. Oh. They like sago palms. That's like a roach motel. <laughs> that is disgusting. I know. My and sago palms sago are dangerous, palm. poisonous for dogs, too. So if you have one and you have a dog... I told you I bought a Sago Palm once in L.A. Didn't I tell you this story? I don't know. They, you know me in plants, and Costco had all of these beautiful Sago Palms. And in L.A. for a time, you know, I had uh, concrete floors, and they were finished white. I know people think it sounds weird. It was beautiful. But yeah. it was a high-gloss white concrete. It was very chic. So the Just Sago like Palm... You. 
I put in the corner and then I got really, really sick. Maybe a couple months later. It was it was pretty. I had the plant, didn't think anything of it, was watering it here and there. And then one weekend I got really, really sick with the flu. The kind of flu that just sort of like knocks you oh, out. Oh yeah. So I was in bed for days, right? Right. And then I think on the third day when I arose. You rose. <laughs> We're gonna get a hate mail on that <laughs> reference. You know but it was coming. the third day. Like I finally had enough energy to get up. <laughs> I got up and I thought, okay, I am starving because I hadn't eaten in uh, Yeah, because you were asleep. I was, yes, you were sick. Yes. yes. So I go out to the kitchen, and this was before I got LASIK, so I couldn't see anything. I didn't have my glasses on. And I thought, oh my gosh, my white floors are so dirty, so, so dirty. It was almost like there was, it looked like there was sand, like black sand all over the, the ground. And I had this rug and then I thought, oh, wait a minute, hold on, something's not right. I got my glasses, put them on. Roaches? When I say millions, I am not uh -huh. exaggerated, exaggerating, millions of these tiny, 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 tiny little like flies had hatched from that sago palm and were covering my floor and embedded into this wool rug. Oh. It took, I had to have the rug sent out to be cleaned oh, and no. vacuuming all that up. Mm -mm. Maybe they were baby roaches. No, I think they were flies, but whatever they were, it was not a pleasant surprise. No. Oh, no. Sago palm. Mm -mm. But they're beautiful. No, it's like if they're outside. Yeah, but I also think the other, like, um, the traditional palm tree is prettier. I like the taller, not the... The Sega with the needle, you know, they have like the sharp needles or pointy needles, I should say. <laughs> they're just sharp. different types of palms. I know. Palms. I know. Yeah, they're they're all they're roach motels. Equally beautiful <laughs> in their own way. We do have to say go rockets too. I know yes! officially oh my gosh. the season started earlier this week for the NBA, but tonight it kicks off for the Rockets. So that's so very, exciting. Very that's exciting. why we're in our red and our Rockets gear and Lauren Kelly's gonna have some fun stuff coming up too. Yeah, she's down at Toyota Center. Even though that's not where they're playing this season. But we we understand. We all need but... we all need new gear. Yeah, that's she's the thing. checking it out. Yeah. Hey, speaking of new gear, so today is the day we are announcing the winner of that Igloo prize package valued at more than 400 bucks. Check out all of these items on the screen. Y'all, amazing. Yeah, the backpack, the tumblers, the cool, all of it. You get all of it. And uh, I don't know if we have a drum roll. I mean, Bob's directing, so he's typically our drummer. Hopefully oh, he has it. No. Okay, no drum roll. He doesn't but have his drumsticks today. We have <laughs> selected the winner. Courtney, do you want to do the honors? Ready? One, two, three. The winner is Diana, Diana Ballard. Ballard. And she is from the southeast side of town near Hobby Airport. That is so awesome. Thanks for watching and entering the chance to win. We will be in touch soon about how to receive your Igloo prize pack. Congratulations. I hope you have a large truck or something you can take it all home. In. You, you've made out. That's some serious loot. Yeah, maybe we could drop it off or something. We'll figure it out. We'll get it to you, Diana. Congratulations. <laughs> and to everyone who entered who didn't win, sorry, but don't worry. We're going to have many more giveaways on Houston Life in the future. So after the break, uh, we're going to continue our little series, Travel Through Takeout. Paul and Olivia take another taste bud trip. The next stop, the Philippines. And we have a very special guest. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've already eaten four of these egg rolls. <laughs> during the break. They're so good. good. Okay, the Philippines has become a popular destination on many travelers' bucket lists with beautiful beaches and warm, welcoming people. It's no surprise why. Yeah, but the Filipino food is still relatively unknown to so many people. I love it. It's one of I my favorite cuisines. So Houston Life team members Paul Shelton and Olivia Kalanick visited Gary's Grill to help others learn more about the cuisine. I'm Olivia Kalanick, Houston Life Associate Producer. And I'm Paul. I'm a Houston Life Photographer. We are here for another episode of Travel, Travel Through, through Takeout. Take We're headed to Jerry's Grill. And we have a very special guest today. Rosanna Aragon! Oh my gosh, I hope you guys are hungry. This is the food I grew up on. I can't wait. What really makes 
Filipino food? Is it, you know, meat, sauces? It's way too diversified. You really can't name one dish associated with a Filipino cuisine just because of diversity. It has a mix of Chinese culture in it, right. Malaysian culture in it, mm -hmm. Spanish culture in it, and of course the Filipino culture in it all together. When you have people coming in to try Filipino food, what is the experience that you want to give them to represent the Filipino culture? Not only the food is a way of sharing the Filipino culture, but also the hospitality, the warmth of the place. Mm -hmm. that and bodies, uh, Filipinos. And homey feeling and welcome is also what yes. sees this yes. uh, the Filipino food. <laughs>
guys, this is so cool. Normally, the practice court would be full of the players getting ready for tonight's game, and uh, the employees would be here at the Toyota Center. But unfortunately, that's not the case this year because the, they're going to play tonight's game in Orlando. I'm sorry, they're going to be at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex at Walt Disney Resort. That's tonight at 8 p.m. It's a Dallas game. The Mavericks going to be there at 8 o'clock, and everybody's really excited. And there's going to be virtual fans, but I want to talk about the gear that fans can still get in and get interactive with this year. And I'm here with Kara Infante. She is the Director of Retail Development and Operations, and we have gathered <laughs> all of this stuff to show off today. And we've even got Clutch here with us in the we've background, too. We've got so Clutch. let's talk about overall fans can still get all this fun gear. They can. So like the rest of the retail world and the restaurants and stuff, we've had to adapt. So we've been really been pushing our fans to rocketshop.com. That's two S's on rocketshop.com. And we're doing all of our online ordering through there. Everything you can get in arena at Toyota Center, you can also get on the website. And on Saturdays, we are doing curbside pickup for people that place Very their orders. Cool. So if Very they cool. don't want it shipped to them, need it for the game on Sunday, you come down tomorrow after placing your order and you can do curbside pickup. Okay, the Clutch City Dancers are with us today and they're they modeling some of these adorable new outfits. There's even a romper and a dress I've never seen There's before. There's a romper and a dress. So the girls are definitely ready for the summer, for sure. Mm -hmm. And as we know, it is hotter than hot outside. <laughs> um, and they're sweating underneath their face coverings, but they are wearing them and we have them in many different styles on our website. Um, the romper and the dress are both really new items to the store, all available on Rocket Shop. And Hunter, who handles all of our marketing for the Rockets, is also wearing one of my favorite shirts Ooh. featuring our two stars um, as they're ready to go. Go to, go to Space <laughs> City. For so, sure. Carol, let's talk a little bit about the piped-in noise. Are we going to hear fans kind of the same way virtually? You will. You will. The league and all the teams have really worked hard to make sure this is a great experience for our players. And, of course, the home court advantage is so important. Um, in every sport and so at our home games which we have one on right. sunday you'll see virtual fans that are our fans so it might be our staff it might be our performers it might be season ticket holders but they'll definitely be decked out in rockets gear awesome. and cheering on our fans. very cool so. clutch city dancers thank you so much for modeling and hunter as well hey clutch thank you so much can i get can i get an elbow oh. there we go that's how we do it these days don't forget tonight against the mavericks 8 p.m let's go rockets Derek and Courtney, back to you guys. Clutch always has the best hip movements. <laughs> oh my gosh. Clutch is really into it. That was fun. And you were saying how much you love Kara's tank top. I do. I need Kara's tank top. Tell her hello, by the way. Big kisses. And big kisses to you, Clutcho. Oh, Clutch, we love you. I know. Go Rockets. And again, tip off is tonight at 8 p.m. against the Dallas Mavs. Lauren, thank you for that. Have fun down there. And after the break from which spots to visit to how to communicate with the locals, we're getting to know the Philippines with our friend Cheryl Pixio next. All right, let's see what's up in the weather world for this weekend. Meteorologist Cambrell Marshall is standing by now. Hey, Cam. I'm your guy. I'm your guy. Look outside here. Look downtown. The beautiful best city in the United States of America, by the mm -hmm. way. 94. We're going to get to 95, are we? Yes, that's normally we're 95 degrees for our high temperature as well. Shower activity, just a couple, but we're going to see more as well to our north. See the yellow box up there? That's a severe thunderstorm watch box just popped up just a few minutes ago strong storms in louisiana we'll see some more storms later on this afternoon look at this evening six o'clock into seven o'clock heavy downpours there we can expect that that's going to continue for the evening anyway so if you have evening plans just know that this is going to be around sliding to the coast by the time we get to the evening hours overnight not so bad but we're going to have tomorrow morning we're going to have a chance for some of those to stick around severe uh, storm prediction center says we have a slight chance for strong storms that means we have those uh, chances for ice Isolated, could produce strong winds and hail, but for us today, though, we're going to be toasty. Rain chances go down throughout the evening. They'll stick around for the first part of the day tomorrow. Get out and enjoy. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Cam. All right, so shifting gears now. Here in Houston, there is a sizable Filipino community, and there are all kinds of ways to experience Filipino culture right here at home. And here with more on what makes the Philippines so magical, Chit Chat Houston co-host Cheryl Pixio is joining us not live now. Hey, girl, how are you? Hi, you guys. Great to see you. 
Okay, you're you're the gal with the no, and we, we need to put this out there right now. We know people are not traveling right now, but we are all creating our vision boards, our wish lists, our bucket lists, and the Philippines truly should be on that list when it's good and ready, when we can all get out and travel. That's right, that's right. But before anything else, we have to play a game first. Oh. How is that okay? Yes, let's do it. Why don't you go, let's go play games first. It's just a very short game, and then we're going to go to talk about the beautiful spots of the Philippines. How's that? Is that that sounds good? awesome. Uh, all right, let's go do this first. As you all know, Filipinos are a big part of entertainment industry, you know? People don't know that many celebrities that we see on television, on movies, are, are part Filipinos. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you guys pictures of celebrities and you guys will, I guess, make a guess. Okay. No descent. All right, let's do it. Is that good? Yeah, let's do it. Wait, so okay. we have to guess All either right, yes, they are the a Filipino descent yeah, who's or they're Filipino? not. Who's yeah. Filipino? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to play a little game. Okay, there you go. First, okay. First round. Is it A, John Legend or B, Bruno Mars? B. Bruno, I would say Bruno Mars. Yeah. B, Bruno Mars? Yes, ma'am. You guys are both correct. Bruno Mars is part Filipino. Actually, All right. His real name is Peter Jean Bayot Hernandez. Uh, Bruno, mom, uh, Bruno Mars' mom is Filipino, and his dad is Puerto Rican and Jewish. And Peter Bruno Jean. By the way. Huh, who knew? All right, so let's go to, let's go to number two, to the second round. Okay. For the second round, we have the first, second picture is ooh, Dave Bautista, David Bautista, or B, Jason Momoa. Who is the Filipino on A or B? I'm gonna go A, Dave Bautista. Oh. What about you, Derek? I think I will also go A, Dave Bautista. <laughs> you guys are both correct again. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Yay. Both are eye right. candy, though, girl. Both are eye candy. <laughs> Let me tell you this. His real name is David Michael Bautista, and his mom is Greek, and his father is Filipino. He even got a Filipino flag tattooed on his shoulder. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love him even more. Right I didn't there. know he was Greek. Right, love it. right. Okay, let's go to round three. Okay. Let's go to the third picture. Is it A, Enrique Iglesias? B, Jokoi. I would say Jokoi. Ah, uh, this is kind of a tricky question. Oh. It's a trick question. Both? What? It's, oh, is it both of them? Enrique is part Filipino? I said both. You're right. Boop, You're boop, right. boop, 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 <laughs> boop. <No. laughs> we should have a bell. I'm, just, I'm telling you, we should have a bell. Okay, let me tell you this. Igle um, Enrique Iglesias, as you all know, his father is the legend Julio Iglesias. Yeah. His mom is Filipino, Spanish, um, and a uh, socialite. So oh. he's part Filipino as well. Jokoy, Jokoy, the comedian Jokoy, his mom is, of course, Filipina, and his dad is Caucasian. Actually, there's a lot more guys I can tell you, but I know we have to be very sensitive on time. But just in the top of my head, which, who else I can tell you? Um, Blue Diamond Phillips is also part Filipino. Oh. You know? Emma Phillips from La Bamba. Yeah. Also, uh, Rob Schneider is also half Filipino. His what? mom is Filipina. A Deuce Bigelow? Nicole yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nicole Scherzinger from Pussycat Dolls. Oh, that is crazy. Filipina. I had no idea. Yes, we uh, uh, oh, we, we should have part two so I can tell you guys who are other part Filipinos out there. <laughs> Very nice. We have another one here, but this is a different game. Okay. okay is a quiz this time. I'm going to quiz you guys about Philippines, okay? What is the second most used language in the Philippines besides our national language, which is Filipino, which is Tagalog, I'm sorry? What is our second language that we use in the Philippines? Mm, English? I'm going to guess dun, 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 B, dun, English. Dun. Yeah, is it English. English. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Is it A, Spanish? B, is it English? C, is it Chinese? Or D, Korean. We're uh, we're both gonna go with B, yeah. right? B, English. B, English. That is correct. <laughs> I love you. it. 
<laughs> Maybe we're English. part Filipino and we didn't know it. <laughs> oh, that would well, be amazing. Actually, let me tell let me tell you guys this English is our second language because you know U.S. is a relative. Uh, after the World War II, you know, Spanish actually is our third language. We speak a little Spanish because Spanish colonized Philippines for more than 300 years. And then, of course, you guys took over U.S. I think you guys colonized us for like, oh, I don't know, 48 years, I think, 48 years. So, and then Japanese also colonized us. So there's three nations that colonized Philippines, Span Spain, uh, Americans and Japanese. That's why if you guys notice our la our last names are in Spanish because of the colonization. Like yep. Pixia. And Cheryl, you are such a great representative of the Philippines. Born and raised there. I know you're a correspondent for the Filipino channel. We've got less than a minute left. But just tell us very quickly two of your top spots. So one day when travel starts happening again, we can be sure yes. to visit. I know everyone is itching to travel, but my number one is Boracay Islands. Actually, Boracay Beach, oh my gosh, has been voted many, many times as the best beach in the world for several years. Mm, beautiful, the gorgeous. Clear water, yes. Crystal, look at that, look at the video. My goodness, how beautiful, how picturesque. And then the second one, I know we're running out of time. If you're feeling adventurous, if you like snorkeling or scuba diving, go to Bataha. Wow. My oh, word. This is in the southeast part of the country. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's like you're looking at a, an aquarium, right? Cheryl, yes, it is gorgeous. gorgeous. Thank you so much today. Sorry we are out of time. It's always great to see you. I know, I know. But we should have part two. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Okay. It was so much Bye -bye. fun. Thanks, Cheryl, Bye. for this great introduction to the Philippines. It really was fun. Okay, still ahead on Houston Life, where you can shop local to get a better quality mattress and pay less. That's next. You know, over the last few months, more and more of us have been spending more time at home, yeah. and many of us have been thinking about our health. It is so true, and one of the most important things we can all do for our health is to get a full night's rest. And to do that, why not shop local, get a better quality mattress, and pay less? You've all, my long-lost, socially distant friend. <laughs> It's so good to see you. Thank you. How's everything been going in the showroom? How's business? And I know every single day you are still going through this entire routine of sanitizing and cleaning all your spaces. Business is doing well, thank God. Uh, we're getting an enormous amount of support from the people in Houston and the surrounding areas. I don't play games when it comes to the health and safety of other people. We sanitize, we clean everything all day, every day. We've done it prior to this, but now we're doubling down on everything. And we take it very seriously. I know you do. You and I have had so many conversations about health and the role a good night's sleep plays in one's health. So especially during COVID, it seems a lot of people have sort of been reminded that, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not sleeping as well as I could. And you've been able to help a lot of people over these past few months. We have. There are four things, Derek, you need to do in your life. We'll start back going forward. Eat well. You brought it up. Have the right attitude. Exercise. What do I mean by exercise? Move. Don't just sit on your rear all day long. Do something that physically makes your heart pump a little faster. And four, sleep well. And it's not because I'm in a mattress business or mattress manufacturing business that I'm saying it. It's a fact. When you sleep well, your body rejuvenates itself at night and you get healthier. Now, you told me something that I hear a lot, but I want to repeat it. Your mattress is at home, you purchased from us. And I thank you very much. But the nicest compliment you gave me was that in your spare bedroom, when you have people coming to visit, that when they get up, they go, that was the best night's sleep I've had. Every time. Right? Every time. Okay, that's how they know how to gauge comfort, because now they realize that at home, they're uncomfortable. Had they not come to visit you and laid on something that is supportive, proper cush, meaning they conform to their body, they would never know the difference. They would have gotten up, they would have never complained, but they would have never said 
best night's sleep. That's what you get with us. You get people that are experts about what makes a mattress, how you fit into that mattress, what's your comfort level, and that is what we offer because we manufacture everything behind me. We know everything about everything that it takes to make your mattress, from the raw components to the finished product to deliver to your home. This is not about selling you a mattress, taking your money, goodbye, never want to see you again. Wrong. It's about selling you the right mattress. If you have a problem, come back to us and we will fix it. You've heard the phrase, seeing is believing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that here, sleeping is believing. Do you like that? I like that. You could use that as a tagline, sleeping is believing, because not only the mattress that we sleep on, but our, our guest bedrooms, you got it right the first time. You hit the ball out of the park. And I know here in Houston, every time we see a new strip center going up or new construction, we're like, oh yeah, maybe we'll get a new, I don't know, burrito place and it's another mattress store. There are so many mattress stores in the city, it drives me crazy. And back when you and I first met, this original Navigation factory location was the only spot you had in town. Then you opened Katy, right. then you opened the Woodlands, right. and today you are breaking really big news because on August 1st, on Saturday, you guys are opening your brand new location in Baybrook. That's right, and we're doing that for the same reason we opened up Katy and the Woodlands to make it more convenient for our customers. And we found that Baybrook is an area that we have customers that are calling a lot and would and have told us, we would love for you to go and open up. And I understand a lot of your business comes from repeat customers right. or word of mouth from people who have already been your customer. 80%. That's incredible. 80, that's, that's our pride our proudest thing that we have, and I'm being sincere, 80% of our clientele is referrals, return customers. It's amazing. Listen, it doesn't surprise me because we're such big fans of yours, and I've been so proud from the very beginning. Once I slept on your mattress, again, sleeping is believing, I became a big fan. I'm still a fan today. I love seeing your small business grow and all the things you've done to support this community. So, you all, thanks for helping us sleep better. It's my pleasure. It's my job. Virtual high five. <laughs> high five. Good to see you, buddy. Say hi to your family. Say hi to your wife, Michelle. I love you. I love I you, will. too, buddy. I love your bro moments. Our bro moments, yeah. right? And our matching shirts, so good. They are having a great sale right now. You can get up to 35% off with free delivery on select mattresses at Texas Mattress Makers. Visit one of their showroom locations or shop online at texasmattressmakers.com. And remember, their brand new Baybrook location opens tomorrow. That's great news. Yeah, congratulations. That's awesome. After the break, it's Finance Friday. We've got five tips to help you diversify your investment portfolio. What you can do now to get the highest return with the least amount of risk when we come back. world since the start of 2020 and if you want to make sure you've been making the best decisions for your investments certified financial planner and president of Shakiba Capital Trevor Shakiba has five tips to help us all Trevor it is good to see you just now during commercial break we were joking about how 2020 really has been kind of a disaster right and you've been coming on the show from the very beginning almost four years now you've talked about this concept of diversifying your portfolio and oftentimes when we're talking about investments it's sort of like speaking another language for a lot of people so really just break it down to the basics what are we chatting about yeah, no, I hear that a lot, Derek, and, and one of the things I hope to do on Finance Friday is really simplify so people can, you know, understand what they need to be doing with their money and their investments. And so the first thing I just want to point out, Derek, a lot of people don't know this or, or they wouldn't believe it, but right now, the S&P 500 in the market is essentially flat for the year. After everything we've been through, believe it or not, if you invested on January 1, you would basically be right where you're at now. And that's a shock to many people. So this is a great time to pause 
what happened to your portfolio? Like what actually happened over this crazy, you know, four or five months? And so what is diversification? It just means not having everything in one basket, not just everything in one company. You need to have a multitude of different investments that hopefully spread your risk out, um, allow you to target a good rate of return, but reduce your risk as much as possible. And how would someone know uh, if they are maybe not diversified enough? You just mentioned that the market has sort of, a lot of people's accounts maybe look exactly now as they did six months ago, but how would how would we know if we weren't diversified enough? Would, would we actually see a, a decrease in our accounts right now compared with six months ago? Well, I think the, the, the main point um, that I would ask the viewers is, did your portfolio and investments do exactly what the market did? So if you go back to the end of February, we were all riding high and then it, it went down exactly with the market, 35%, and now you're right back up. You may not be diversified because you're just following the market, basically. You need to have different types of investments that zig when the market zags. Make sure you've got a multitude of different things, and that's why I'm advocating. Take a take a look. Get a get a second opinion. Go to another advisor. Make sure that that you've got the right mix. Now's the time to do it. Okay, so get a second opinion. Maybe even better, get multiple perspectives to weigh in to ensure that your accounts look the way they should. Um, let's talk about like what people are actually invested in. Diversification by location. Essentially, you mean um, th there there are ways to think that you are diversified without actually being diversified, and it all boils down to your advisor, right? Yeah, exactly. So a couple mistakes on the next two points I see a lot. Number one, people will have multiple accounts and advisors and think they're diversified, but what they've really done is they've just diversified by location, but they still own the same thing in every single account, like Apple, for example. If you own the same fund or the same set of companies in every account or with every advisor, you're not really diversified. So that's my point. True diversification means having a mix of different asset classes and investments. Is there anything or any such thing as over diversification, Trevor? Yeah, absolutely. I see this one a lot too. So again, just having a thousand different companies or say 60 different mutual funds, that can be over diversified. You really only need maybe 12 or 15 different index funds or mutual funds, if you will, to, to get really diversified. So remember with investing, you don't wanna just have a bunch of stuff that you can't track. You need to be consolidated and simplified so you can really stay focused on your long-term financial goals. And you mentioned, uh, I believe, in our second point about what, what was happening to people's portfolios in April. If we've been seeing our portfolios zigzag, you know, up and down, and this applies to anyone, right, with investments, a 401k, whatever type of investments you have, um, let's not forget about real estate because while there is a lot of volatility in the stock market, real estate seems to have been proven to be a little more stable. Is that true? Well, look, I, I, I'm a big advocate of real estate. That's what we're doing now at Shakiba Capital. So I might be a little bit biased and there is no perfect investment, but what you wanna have is different asset classes that react differently. So real estate can provide control and stability in times of duress, especially uh, housing, single family rentals or apartments, which I'm a huge advocate of. Basically what I'm trying to, to, to really convey here, Derek, is to find the right balance. For the viewers out there, find the right balance that fits you, and now's the time to do it because we've had one heck of a six month period all over the place, incredible volatility. Pause, look and see if you need to make adjustments, um, and look, 2020 is not over. We still have an election coming up. So make sure you've got the right allocation and make sure you're prepared for the rest of the year and, and targeting those those really important goals moving forward. And Trevor, before we let you go, I mean, you, you've always told us do not make financial decisions emotionally, right? So if we see the market going down, don't panic and pull out your investments, right? Let's say, let's just look at the other side of that coin though and say, you know, there are a lot of people out there who, who just would prefer not to look at their account. Maybe they're not as diversified as they should be. They're their money is just sort of sitting there, maybe creeping along, getting a little more uh, uh, return on their money. What about people like that who just are not, um, I don't know, just paying attention? I guess that's a terrible way to phrase it, but how, how much attention should we be paying? 
Well, Derek, I think you should be paying extreme attention to your money when it comes to your investments and, and building wealth towards your, you know, the, those financial goals that you care so deeply about. But look, you don't want to make decisions based on emotion, but a very close second uh, would be, yeah, not paying attention to it. That's where finding someone you trust that is an expert, like a certified financial planner, can really be so important. Get that second opinion, interview multiple advisors, make sure they're a, a CFP, and, and lay out that plan and, and, and get going. But yeah, just keeping a ton of money in bonds or in cash, not knowing what's going on, uh, is, is, is a critical error. So I would advise everyone to make sure you pay attention. Yeah, the right advisor is going to cost you a little bit, but they can also make you a lot of money on that back end. Trevor Shakiba, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Have a great weekend. And as always, if you would like to connect with Trevor, you can visit ShakibaCapital.com. We'll be right back. Coming up on Monday's show, our food journey continues with Paul and Olivia. This time, they're going to get a taste of the Caribbean experience and also experience the island vibes at Cole Running's Jamaican Bar and Grill. That's here in Houston. Y'all, this is so good, too. I love me some Jamaica. Yeah, it looks like uh, Olivia's having a little dance party <laughs> along with her lunch. That's going to be a good time. Also, sun protection, so critical uh, this time of year, especially, especially since many of us are, you know, craving a little more time outdoors, going a bit stir crazy at home. So important to protect your skin from both UVA and UVB rays. Mm. Dermatologist and our friend Sherry Ingerham will share her list of the best sunscreens and SPF products for both kids and adults and I think if I remember correctly last time she was here she was mentioning mineral sunscreens yes those are the most effective absolutely okay well enjoy your Friday dinner of Cheerios and champagne dinner of champions it is see you Monday